We're live. <laughs> All of a sudden, whoa, we even maced the button. I don't know that we've ever done a uh, YouTube live from the cell phone after recording. Mm-mm. I don't think so. So, this is the first. Because I don't think until we hit a certain amount of subscribers, we can even go YouTube live on a mobile device. Oh, well, this is true. We have arrived. Um, and we just wanted to... It's not working. Check in. There. <laughs> just wanted to check in. You should go to uh, YouTube on your phone. I bet I got a notification um, that those guys went live. Look at is that. there a way? There I am. Is there a way to see comments? Oh, you have comments. It's there. live. Look. Although, surprise, live. Brody Hutchins is in. Brody. And the missus. Oh. Mrs. Smeared. How are you doing, honey? Brody and Part were in Brad Miller. Brody and Part were doing this because you said that like you had to replace your Oprah time slot. <laughs> so this is like, I don't know whose time slot this is. Right. Somebody, Brad, was that Brad Miller said that we were up late? Yeah. Brad Miller did, uh, um, 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 what's his name? Uh, oh my gosh, Henning. Oh. Henning did that challenge. I don't know if you saw any of that. I, I did not. I feel Six like... Feet Apart challenge. Okay. Brad Miller recorded the song. Like they, He put out like all these tracks that you could use. Okay. Google tracks and stuff. Brad Miller did it. I watched it earlier today. Sent me down a rabbit hole. First Brad's was great, and then it sent me down a rabbit hole. <laughs> Brody thought you were calling him honey. <laughs> he may have been talking to Bubbler Mom. Yes, I was talking to my wife. Perhaps. Uh, if she just woke up, it's pretty impressive, because we've been playing all night. We were, but we played through your new Tyler amp, and it was the kinder, gentler, warmer amp. <laughs> it's a wonderful amp. It's right over there. Yes, yeah, sir. A Tyler PT-22. Mm-hmm. So basically a blackface, modeled after a blackface... 60s Fender Princeton, but juiced a little bit. Yeah, reverb, tremolo. Mm-hmm. Tremolo. Let's hear it. Oh, the amp. Well, and it's not going to really come across well on this, but um, when during your Pennsylvania swing, maybe you'll get to hear it. We're well, talking about I, doing... I was worried that they wouldn't be hearing us, because I don't know. We have the mic hooked up to the phone, and I'm not sure. But they are, if they're commenting on I the guess, fact that we're... Yeah. Is this fuzzy thing on up here? <laughs> um, he said, uh, Brad, Miller said, Brad, Brad Miller said it was a lot of work uh, we haven't done a, a amp video before so we were talking about that what would it look like and um, so Beard just got the Tyler in Brody's going to be coming into town 4th of July weekend so maybe he'll get to actually see it in person but um, we haven't really tried the YouTube live well we have kind of with any kind of playing mm-hmm. and this was like very last minute uh, decision to because we have a box, but we'll wait. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's already eight people. It's about eight more people than I thought we'd have after having gone dark for like a three week. weeks or whatever it's been. Brad said, uh, Brad, um, he said that his video was a lot of work and he said that synchronizing the video, I don't know what you were using, Brad, but if you were using Premiere Pro and you were having trouble with synchronizing, let me know and I'll help you out. There's a, there's an easy way to do that. If you're using anything else, I have no idea. Um, People, you know, you say I have a box, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's, but it's not. He has the box. It's I a know. different box. But I tune in when people get a new box. When there's an unboxing, <laughs> it gets me every time. Somebody's like, "I'm doing hack did it the other night." Surprise unboxing. I'm like, "Oh, I'm in." I lurked. I watched. And you know what he got? What he got? A TL pad. Oh, nice. All right, he got the TL 808. Oh, well, the green one. A little jelly. Yep. 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 So it's like, um, who, who told us about Tim? I'm just, um, um, Paul Ewing. Yeah. Paul Ewing from Stompbox Steals. Steals told us about Tim Lewis and we met Tim, had him on for one of the interviews and his fellow Canadians uh, found out about him. So, um, we had, uh, Ben Combs had him on mm-hmm. and then so did Guitar Hack and Tim has been very generous with sending out pedals to us and to those guys and. We've done a couple episodes. We're waiting for another pedal. Um, so great. You, hopefully this is doing well for Tim because he's a really nice guy, yeah. really smart, makes some really nice stuff. But the Stinger fuzz. Yeah, right. I love it. I don't know if you love it as much as I love it because I keep turning it on. <laughs> <laughs> we play two. We play twice live now. <laughs> I keep turning it on, and I'm like, I don't know. Do the four ten. Uh, Fender Super Amp, the Stinger Fuzz has a... There's thing to it. <laughs> I, and I have not... I don't think I've rolled it up 
on my guitar the whole way to 10 when I've turned it on. Because, I mean, I'm still figuring it out. You know, right. It's a new pedal and everything. But well, it's a new pedal. You're playing with an amp you haven't played through for a couple years. Yeah. In an outdoor venue. Yeah, with, that, the, with probably not, not the mic'd. sound. Yeah, yeah, the sound reinforcement you would typically have. And uh, Brad Miller said it was Phil Mora, the, 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 the program that he used. Okay. I'm not, I don't know that one. He said it was all he could afford. Yeah. The uh, I kind of luck out, Brad. The Premiere Pro, like the whole Adobe suite, where you get like Photoshop and Premiere Pro and all that. Because I'm an educator, you can get like a really sweet subscription, sweet, sweet. <laughs> yeah, subscription sweet deal on that. So, um, should we open this? We should, because I'm curious. Because this was um, a long time coming. Promised a long time ago. Took a long time to be delivered, but um, I don't even think it was fully manufactured. In any kind of big run, when it was committed that Fender would send this to us, and then right. COVID hit <laughs> and slowed everything down. Yeah, and then I think he got. I think they got crazy over there for a little bit. Yeah, because typically it was supposed to be here before it was in the before about the same time it hit the stores. I saw it hit Sweetwater a little bit before it got here, mm-hmm. but I think I think they got pretty crazy over there. Our guy, our guy, we have a guy at Fender now. That's right. Go like- figure. Great guy. Um, he, uh, I think he got swamped. Because, you know, they were closed for a while, then they're back open, and they're trying to get all the orders and stuff done. Ooh, baby. Ooh, I like the, there we go. the footprint size. So that is the MGT Tube Tremolo. They do have another tremolo in this series, but this was the new one coming out, and I thought that we had to go with that. Right. Um, I don't know that we can do every tremolo pedal that I, you know. <laughs> if a manufacturer has more than one, I'm not sure we can do that. What you got there? I just went over and grabbed the pinwheel, which was the first pedal they sent us for our Leslie series, and I was just curious to see if it's the exact same enclosure footprint. It probably is. Um, I think I had in my head that the pinwheel was bigger. What's going on? Uh, Brad comments? Miller says, hey, you guys have some great hookups. Yeah, it's the power of the uh, email. Sean Zimmerman checking in. Hey, man, we haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're doing well. Recovering still. Improving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because it's... For us, this channel's been about forming those relationships more than anything. I mean... I don't want to say more than anything else. It's been about having fun more than anything else. Getting right. together, playing each other, playing gear, playing new gear, and then making these relationships with these different companies that who do stuff that we like. So here you go. Looks the same. Is it the same footprint? Well, I guess we do. Yep. Guess. Put that one in front. So it's and it's a tube. I mean it's an actual twelve eighty seven probably or something. My understanding is there's an actual tube in there. I don't see. There's no way to pop it open and see it. But <laughs> We were just talking earlier that we don't open things. So we got a bypass. We got a tap. I haven't even really looked at the controls of this yet. We have a bypass and a tap. We have a level knob. So when you get that perceived volume knob loss, you have your level. I'm, yeah. <laughs> and if you turn the intensity off, you can use it as a boost. <laughs> I just put these on. I'm like, holy crap, I'm Tom Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. What do we got here? You have... I'm not sure how this works, but you have speed. And then you also have all the different subdivisions. And it looks like there's a lot, man. A quarter, eighth, triplet. And there's a tap. Yeah, there's quarter a tap. note, dotted eighth note, quarter note, triplet, eighth note, dotted sixteenth note, eighth note, triplet, sixteenth note. LED kill switch because they I think they, they do make super bright LEDs if I remember correctly from the other well one. that that if you turn that on all the knobs light up oh that's right and I do like that uh, of mm-hmm. course I like lights uh, Brody said watching you guys unbox a pedal is like watching Ralphie open his Red Rider BB gun on Christmas morning <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad Miller said maybe a micro tube I'm just trying to look at what we got here um, so intensity knob wave knob. I'm wondering on that speed knob if it works just like a normal speed knob until you tap, and then when you tap, if it picks up on the subdivisions. It'll be interesting to see how you set that. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Um, first of all, it says thank you for purchasing the tube. 
the, the MTG tube tremolo. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a versatile analog tremolo that uses a real new old stock 6205 preamp tube and features three different selectable waveform modes. A tap tempo. And a tap tempo. So it does have a tube. What kind of 6205 tube preamp tube. There and it's go. saying it's new old stock, so... If anybody would have old tubes laying around. Right. <laughs> this is interesting. Um, you have a three-way toggle here. And if you look at that... In the up position, it has triangle, sine wave, square wave. Then it has ramp down, triangle, ramp up in the middle. And then it has like a short, then a long, then a short square wave. I'm going to go with like random maybe. I don't know. We'll, get, we'll, we'll read. We'll learn more about it. But uh, I'm, I'm guessing then the wave knob here picks between the three so maybe all the way over here is sine triangle square so you have three different ways to use that knob okay. yeah. this is what i'm guessing well, well the we'll mode uh the mode switch select one of three tremolo modes triangle sine square ramp triangle sawtooth and adjustable square wave oh so how long this Ooh, interesting right and the sawtooth which we were talking about like a chop because we did the um jam well, pedal tonight so you have the ramp up. Basically, that's ramp up, ramp down. Mm -hmm. It goes straight up and then slopes down, or slopes up and goes straight down. All right, there it is. <laughs> Mike we, Mike H checking in. So you guys may need some coffee. Yeah, it is late. And I'm using. Who's that, Mike? Mike H. Hi, Mike. Mike mm. check. Mike check. I thought I was thinking Mike Roblox because All we right. did that pedal tonight too. Speaker cranker. Yeah, we had kind of a little bit of a busy night. Got some stuff done. So what we do? We did uh, speaker cranker. Mm -hmm. Quick video on that. Right. Jam pedal. Jam pedal, big chill. And uh, and the uh, Key Electronics uh, tremolo. What is it? Uh, Dyna, Dyna, Dyna trem. Sorry. <laughs> what is it? Is that gold? Shotted gold. Uh, maybe a copperish. Yeah, copper. They do have some really unique uh, colors in these pedals and they have that kind of like brushed brushed aluminum kind of textured and these jewel lights are crazy bright this is different i can't yeah just two little tiny oh ones. right yeah if you haven't checked out the fender series of pedals You're right go down to your local guitar shop and check them out they're they're killing it they are killing it. Any swag? I don't. I don't. Uh, Fender. No. Oh, we have free lessons. Sweet. Anybody need the code? We will forgive um, Fender on their somewhat weak swag game because they sent us Twisted Telly pickups at a Bigsby. <laughs> <laughs> if they can keep their stickers, it's fine. <laughs> uh, Mike H says, "I never read manuals when I was young. I'm feeling my age now because I like you guys. I read the manual first after I put my glasses on, of course." Yes. <laughs> It is sad times indeed, my friend. Mm -hmm. A little gray in the goatee, some spectacles. <laughs> and look, I'm Tom Arnold. <laughs> it, uh... Yeah. yeah, so no, it was great. It, it came a while ago. Um, mm -hmm. And just the schedule's been a little cuckoo. Um, but it's great. Looks great. We're well, curious, because other people are not wild about um, things that have tubes in them, but... It's a real tube. I'm wild. I'm wild about things that have tubes on. Well, but some people are like, oh, they really don't do much. They're just for show. Even in the rotosphere, they talk about, well, what does that tube really help you do? I don't know. It glows. It looks cool. <laughs> yeah, but it's. Not, I mean, the it warms. Uh, I, I find that the, the tube things... rotosphere is so much warmer than any other right. pedal I've ever. Oh, sorry. I tried to get you in frame, and I got myself out of frame. Oh, well, hey, Tim. Tim. Tim, we, we were just talking about you. We were. We were singing your praises earlier. Mm -hmm. We did talk about your uh, daughter's Brielle boost in the episode that we just did about the speaker cranker because jamie stillman from earthquaker was quick to say it's not a boost and we're like this is a boost <laughs> this is a boost <laughs> with a big knob with a lot of headroom what did you say is like crazy number of db headroom in that right. thing it's oh it's gosh. crazy but was was i correct in seeing like brielle's building some kind of fuzz now or something i think brielle has moved on to something else or added to her repertoire 
Yeah, I think there's a fuss pedal coming. Uh, 30 dB. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we couldn't have it up too loud. It was chasing us out of the room. Well, for the way we were using peeking it. Peeking out all the... Yeah. Peeking out all the stuff. and Arena rock. So what else? I, f- I feel like there was something else that we have... I feel like there's like... Well, since we stopped doing the 19 conference... Well, since we haven't been live every day at 430. Probably, there's been a ton of stuff. Probably the biggest we, thing is that... I'm just going to blindly spin this around. I don't know if you can see. I'm showing the mess. Oh, there's a mess, but right over there is a timer, I guess. That, um... Adjust, still adjusting to, right? Because yeah. you're used to a 40 watt Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, yeah. and I'm playing a 30 watt Classic 30, and then you bring a little 22 watt in here, some slightly smaller enclosure, but a 12 inch speaker. But it's really warm. It's fine in a spot. Like it's it. I think it fills a, a hole in our in cumulative amp collection. Yeah, because I'm. I mean. Every amp I've ever had has been between 40 and 50, well, 30 and 50, because I have a classic 30 now, too. Right. So, a classic 30s, 40 watt hot rod deluxe, Mm -hmm. the super amp, I think, is about 50 watts, and I think the old uh, 212 hot rod DeVille was 60 watts. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. What's that? Uh, for sure. They start talking about TL pedals, and mm-hmm. Brad Miller asked if it was better to order from Reverb or direct from Tim's website. And Tim said the website for sure. And we also mentioned earlier that there is a pedal being carried by a courier pigeon, maybe a Canadian goose that's on its way to <laughs> us. Uh, Tim had done some um, tweaks, I think, on the one honker pedal that we talked to him about. He, mm-hmm. said, he actually sent us two honker pedals, and we were we actually called him, I think, about something. In, mm-hmm. I think we. I think I don't think we got charge roaming charges. Um, but we talked to Tim, and he um, was like, "Yeah, I want to make a couple changes on that." And so he was. He did it, built it, sent it, but it's uh, not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be another maybe spontaneous. YouTube the bicycle one. delivery guy got a yes, flat tire. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you meant that kind of pedal? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, I guess the amp would be the other big thing. I kind of feel like there was something. I'm looking around the room. Something else, but I can't remember what it was. But we started back to playing live together. Or... Yeah, well, and then we started to cut through. So we've done, we put out the Line 6 uh, pedal today. Yeah. We put out the Boss TR 2, two last Wednesday or Saturday. Put out the episode, the 20... So if you haven't seen that, we, we have the season opener that has all the tremolos that we have right now that we're going through. Uh, but I've been joking with Pat that that's probably part one because there's just a lot more tremolos than Leslie Pedals. And right. Just, we're, as we're looking at the ones that we're going through, we're seeing other ones that we're like, why, did, why don't we get that one? Right. Why don't we get that one. Um, uh, Brian Landis checking in. What's up, Uncle Bri? So... Well, Uncle Brian, in case you missed it and you're not going to go back and watch it right away, this was part of the purpose of tonight's broadcast. Fender sent us out a little goodie for our tremolo series. So we're back. I mean, I wonder if we're supposed to go in the settings and switch that. Uh, the, um, um, Facebook, you can do it. I don't know if you yeah, I don't know if you do it on YouTube because I know that, uh, oh my gosh, Dave Wiener that we interviewed has a little quick video about how to do that, but I think it's for Facebook Live so that we're not backwards. Although, I don't know. I don't have a good side, so it really doesn't matter. No, I guess we're not backwards there. <laughs> Again, we're backwards here. Welcome to the Tom Arnold and the Beard Show. Uh, <laughs> Tim said, uh, hashtag Canadian internet delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit behind on Uncle Bry. He's been putting out some content, and I have been a bad friend. I have not checked out a lot of it. I just haven't been... On the interwebs quite as much. I've been kind of busy, but um, I think Uncle Bry is putting out stuff on It his... all starts with a woman. It always starts with a woman. Or... <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. You need to watch it. And there's been some other ones, too. I'm trying to think of it. Oh, wow. Well, so uh, Tim said he got his uh, tremolo PCB boards uh, in. Just haven't finished the artwork. Any suggestions? Hmm. 
What about an armadillo and calling it a tremadillo? <laughs> oh, wait, that's already been taken. Um, hmm. Kind of wait. What kind of sine waves is this? Is yeah. just a sine wave? You just want to use this? <laughs> <laughs> Still <a> hard work. <laughs> he said, uh, Uncle Bryce said he did a self indulgent jam. So, yeah, I was watching that too. That's the other thing I was watching. Oh. Uh. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, hey, I'm tired. I know. Um, we, we got 11 people with no lives. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is pretty good because I try to follow, and we still, since we kind of paused the 19 conversations, we had a couple people in the pipeline, and one was Zach Broyles from Mythos. I don't feel too bad because when I jump into his chats that he does quite frequently, he doesn't have a whole lot more than this. So <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> nice to pretty nice to see the getting the old band back together here. <laughs> um, yeah, Brody was telling me that. You know, oh, did you see this? What did I see? Oh yeah, you can't. Can you see that here? Let me let me just play cameraman for a so second. So we did. We added that. We added the hour of distraction T-shirt. Is oh, too big? is this um? This? Do you know what the new code is? Do we give them the new code? Yeah, I do. Um, There's a new discount code available. I think it's too much talk. <laughs> what? I think. Uh, I think it's too much talk. If it was 35 percent off, right? Anything. This is in there. The new ones in there, but the tremolo ones yep. in there. The um, Leslie series. Leslie series. Yeah. I was planning on the next time we did a live stream having that information, having the code. Mm-hmm. Right. Pretty sure it's too much talk because we, we we still laugh about all the time. Too much right. talk, boys. We couldn't put. Are you high? Right. <laughs> Are you high? Is forty five percent off. <laughs> But uh, too much talk, I think. And so we have the Hour of Distraction shirt. You got the Tremolo shirt. You got that Leslie Sound shirt. The classic PJ and the Beard logo. And I think that's it, right? I think those are the four t-shirts that are there. <laughs> um, and I own them all, I mean. Right. I just ordered uh, that one, actually. Did you? That one in a, in a fresh version of the OG one, because it's probably got... From my double chin and my beard, it just like rubs this, and I get it gets all pilled right here. So I had to order myself a fresh uniform. Um, we got uh, thirty nine, the thirty nine lashes checking in. So, uh, hi guys, from one beard to another. Oh, nice. Thirty nine. Oh, is that um? The oh my gosh. guy, you've been exchanging messages with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah blood, oh so. man, I'm sorry. We've been talking. So, friend request, go out. He's part of that, uh, there's a pedal group online on Facebook. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. The, um, yeah, it's a Facebook group. Is it McGraw? McGraw? I'd have to, I can't look right now because we're using I know. I just, I was just like, if, we, if we were doing this live, I Tony. would... Tony, Tony, thank you, from Tony. The guitar. Thank you, Tony. If we were doing this live, Tony, I would have I would have pulled up Facebook or whatever, right. pulled up Messenger and checked it and had it and, and faked my way through it. And don't feel bad. I have kids in my classroom that I've had for a year, and I will get a brain for <laughs> <laughs> It's it's not you, it's me. Um, but no, Tony, Tony, uh, his YouTube, he has a video on his YouTube of his pedal board. Like some pedal board builds and stuff like that where he's tweaking and stuff. But there's one where it shows how his pedal board slides into the back of his 212 cabinet. And it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And it's super. If we were doing the episode, if we were doing one of the 19 conversations right. that we were doing. Right. Uh, Are You Bored series. I would be pulling that video right. up and showing it. So next time we do like an official live stream. Uh, Tony, hopefully you don't mind. We'll probably show your board because it is, it's like, it's awesome. It's really cool. Mike H was asking, speaking of board beards, what do you think of red beard effects? I have not played any of it. I, I think I saw quite a few videos from the, um, from the, the NAM, the, the January NAM in Anaheim. I saw some videos, but I mm-hmm. have not played any of the, um... I like his logo. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. It's a big beard. Um, they're like lots of fuzz puddles, right? Actually, in Red Beard Effects, if it's one I'm thinking of, they're, uh, who's, one of the guys that's involved in that, like the backer of that, owns another pedal company. Okay. And I'm trying to remember which one it was. It's, it's a, it's a popular pedal company. 
Um, another boutique kind of pedal company. That, so they're just cool. Yeah, they're cool. I never played them yet. Although I want to own one of their shirts and I want to own one of their pedals. <laughs> right. So Tony, a.k.a. the 39 Lashes, he said, it's cedar and pine for tone. <laughs> it's really cool, man. He has like a 212 cabinet. Uh, and the back has like latches like you'd have okay. on a road case. You mm-hmm. open that up and the pedal board folds down and you take the pedal board out. There's like a hook to hang the cables on the inside of the cabinet and everything. Uh, Mike H, I think, is saying, is it Thorpey FX that is also involved with Thorpey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm th- yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Now we're getting questions. Uh, what is the guitar on the right, the plain gloss one? Is it a PRS? Uh, that, that one? Yeah, that's... PRS Swamp, Swamp Ash Special. That is beautiful grain. It's a 2001 PRS Swamp... 2000... It's a 2000 PRS Swamp Ash. It's worth you have seeing my Swamp Ash before I go up here and grab it. <laughs> Pardon my Swamp Ash. <laughs> <laughs> The grain on this guitar was worth you having to see my nether, my backside. This is ridiculous. Redonk. I mean, even the even the back. That ain't your grandpappy's coffee table right there. Look at that thing. That is a nice one. Yeah. There you go. We played. <laughs> Got a pretty fat neck. Be delicious. That's what else. Oh. You're in comment. I am, that. right? <laughs> yeah, Mike, it is a beauty. I'm jealous. There, well, I'm jelly of a few of the Beards guitars, and this is this is one of them, and the other one is right there. All right, so let's go. Let me put my swamp ash back. One moment, please. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, I'll give you a topic. <laughs> Relicking. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Should we relic the swamp <laughs> ash or not? Did it, did it get relic that way from being in the bottom of a swamp? I don't know. This might be the guitar I'm most envious of. I have a single cut hollow body, but this is his McCarty hollow body. And you know, it's just plain. But I think the reason I'm jealous is right here. The piezo, and that's what Paul Reed calls it, piezo. Some people call it piezo, but Paul calls it a piezo. The piezo pickup in this thing is not only magnetic, but it is magical. It sounds really good. We you, we plugged it only a few times, and it is a true acoustic tone. And I can't remember if he did some of that technology kind of for Alex Lifeson of Rush. I'm not sure when that's he kind of designed some of that stuff. But um, great guitar, super light. You're right. I mean, as far as you know, what we just looked at on that Swamp Ash compared to this, it's a little pedestrian. It's got like a tight kind of pinstripe in the grain, but it's beautiful and it's super light. As you can see, I'm holding it with like two fingers very carefully though. And between Jason and I, many yeah, I mean, PRSs. Hollow body. Yeah, I have my favorite. Like, for real, yeah. hollow body. Like, there, there's no center block running on them. Can you hear the sustain? Hear that? Yeah, it, no, it's really nice. It's really comfortable to play. Um, I know we've talked about a lot of these on the show before, but... Some of the... I, it, 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 we're both big PRS fans. Don't let Pat fool you. He has... PRS is to be jelly of too. <laughs> uh, but neither one of us go out. At, at, at my McCarty, I bought brand new. It was like the second or third guitar I ever bought. I bought it brand new. But every other guitar, I think, has been, since then, has been a used guitar. Right. So we're, we're, we're looking for, I was looking for a hollow body, but I wasn't looking for a 10 top. And Right. Um, I actually, in some regards, like that better than some of the crazy ten tops and yeah, stuff. Yeah, some of them do get a little much. Um, but also, no no birds for any of us. This is some really nice moons on this one, especially the one here in the last fret. That is moontastic. Uh, they're asking what the top is. My guess would be maple. Uh, although they're saying it looks a little cedar-esque, but I would think... Oh, jeez, I don't know. My guess would be maple, but what do I know? What is a McCarty... Uh, it's a 2000. This is a 2001. Um, JR Guitar 64, welcome. And he said, uh, must be a feedback machine. It's pretty controllable, actually. Um, oh, yeah. It's interesting. But, okay, but that's why I like it. Because you can put it with an overdrive pedal. Mm-hmm. You can crank it up. And if right. you wanted to, and I think... Oh, uh, is that the... Maybe the 10th fret 
for some reason, that note right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, you can make it sing. But it's controllable. But the first time I ever played a PRS Hollow Body was at a Blues Jam. It was a friend's. It was Ray Santana's. Um, Ray had a couple of PRSs over the years. At one point, he had one of those really thick ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. The ones that were like almost like an acoustic guitar. But he handed me this PRS Hollow Body one day. And I'll never forget playing that guitar. I searched for this one for like 15 years after I played that one. Uh, because, yeah, I hit a note. <laughs> And I let it sustain, <clears throat> and you could feel the vibration through the guitar, and feel it walk the whole way up the guitar. Like you feel it in your chest, in your stomach. Like that's nice. Controllable feedback is a beautiful thing. Mike Eight said, "I uh, just bought a five hundred dollar Hotel Body Gretsch that I'm fond of. Was impressed given the price point." Sean Zerman saying, "You know, he buys used too. That's the way to go. That's kind of what we do as well." Um, <laughs> TL pedals. Tim says fuzz wall and a slide? Question mark. <laughs> sure, isn't that what you do with every hollow body guitar and a tremolo pedal? That was this one, <laughs> right? That was the guild. The guild. The guild, guild. That's right there. Whoops, not there. No, no. Boom. Um. Well, that's a guild, but sitting right next to it, over here is a Epiphone three three nine. We so, like we 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 and a Harley Benton uh, double cut junior. So I mean Harley Benton Epiphone Guild PRS PRS <laughs> is what you're looking at right now. Yeah. So we, um, we're not discri- we don't discriminate. <laughs> right. Yeah. We we like all price points. Uh, did you see the new SE uh, Paizo hollow body? Yes, I did. They're, oh, yeah. they're killing me. They, they carve an F hole in anything. It's like a blue light to me. You put a blue light on something, I want it. You carve an F hole in something, I want it. In the uh, the SC Hollow Buddies are nice. I played one. I played two. Uh, Mike H said it was a, like I think he's talking about the uh, Gretsch uh, 655 GT or something. Junior Hollow Body solid block, I believe. Gretsches are. I like Gretsch guitars. I like their pickups. I think their pickups sound really unique. Amanda Coombs, is that Ben's sister, I believe? Mm-hmm. Is that true? Hey, how you doing? True story. Thanks for jumping in to our very impromptu. Uh, the purpose, right. purpose is to check in and unbox this uh, little beauty that Fender sent us. So, Pat told me it'd be quick. Oh, we'll just do it real quick. Real we'll quick. just do it Super real quick, quick and unbox. Real quick, no problem. I'm thinking, I'm really tired. Okay, we'll do it real quick. <laughs> Every time one of you jumps in here, we appreciate it, but <laughs> darn it, you're making me say up later. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny that, well, because I just didn't know doing it impromptu, like how many people would be in, but here you are. So here's a good question for the people that are in the room. Like, So we were doing every day at 4.30. And we did that every day at 4.30 for almost 60 days in a row. There was a couple Sundays that we took off and right. things like that. There was a couple days that we had to take off. But over 60 episodes at 4.30. Mm-hmm. Um, now that we're able to get back together, we're sitting in the same room and um, record again. The question is, what do we do with the live stream? Because we both miss it. Like, right. I don't necessarily miss... I do miss every day of doing it, but right. I mean, it, it, was, it was a bit of a grind at times. It was, well, well just, just like you had, you were there, we had the time, right. we had the... You had to like the, do your day format. around it, right? Yeah, and you had to kind of figure out clip of the day, like guitar of the day, and... But anyway. But I mean, it was fun, and I certainly wouldn't mind doing it again every day, but... It, I mean, there's, there's that... More of the scheduling of it, just scheduling everything. Anyway, question is, question. Because some of you know when all the live streams are. We're trying... I mean, one of the things we need to start talking about is what would be a good, maybe, night all right. to do a live stream and what would be maybe a good time to do a live stream. And so, like, is there a night of the week where everybody's silent? And, I mean, and then when we say that, too, we have to put out there, you know, we obviously don't want to do it at the same time Ben right. or Hacker or Hack, doing it. Right. Um, beyond that, I mean, we don't have a lot of... Two, pe- two people, Brian Brian has already answered, and so is Sean, saying Wednesday night never seems to have anything going on. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I mean, there's. I don't know. Yeah, and if we do I don't, it, I don't, I don't know how much I want to get into the philosophy behind it because we have, there's a, a bit of a philosophy behind it. Tim, Tim, uh, thirds of the Wednesday saying Wednesday nights are great for him. Okay, that's something to think about. Um, Amanda Combs saying that she loved the stream. She often just lurked and listened on my headphones. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, because you're. Your brother was one of the first ones to be super kind and supportive to us uh, outside. Brian Landreth sort of made that connection, but but Ben mm-hmm. was great in kind of promoting people and pushing us to when we were kind of infants in the live stream world. Before we got super professional and sat on a couch and used reading glasses, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um, Tim said a hair later would be better. So like, ten, like what, what's a hair later? It's 1020. What time is it in Canada? <laughs> Canada is three days ago. Just yeah. Tim, yeah. Tim's internet, he's answering our first question we asked. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, I don't know. Brad, I Miller, mean, you, Brad you, Miller's saying he likes Wednesday as well. You want to be... Tim said it's tomorrow there. No, it's too, <laughs> you want to be like... It'd be nice to do it on a night where other people aren't doing it yeah. and you're not competing yeah. with somebody right. because we don't want to compete with other no. people. On the other hand, we also don't want to build build our channel or try to keep building the channel based on when other people are free because they're not following the other people they follow. If that makes sense. <laughs> mm. Like there has to be... I, I love the community that's being built there and the sharing that goes along and how we bounce around and like come over and hacks or over and bends. But I can't count on... Am I saying this... Right, I can't. We we we've decided a long time ago we couldn't count on. Can we get hacks group? Can yeah, we kind get of the ben? coattail thing, or like when they're done, will they spill over and come right to watch? And yeah, we can't yeah. count on that. So we right. want to build kind of organically, build something too. But and truly, um, what we're trying to say is whatever works best with our wives. We should probably poll them first. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so. Thank you for all your suggestions. Now we'll ask our wives and see what they say. <laughs> yeah, Tim clarified that he meant like five thirty, like a hair later. So like, oh okay, five thirty. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Bry. <laughs> I know I'm like teasing you all because I'm looking at that Tyler amp and it's a great looking amp because it's got the classic tweed finish, but then a little bit more of a black grill cloth and mm. it has, um, I don't know. I, I, I'd want to call those like, those aren't like the claw. Those knobs are like the ones that's on my tone bakery. The, the Fender Vibrolux reissue okay. I had years ago had knobs like that. Turn the camera. I know. Should I? Should I go just get it? It's not very heavy. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I feel bad just, I just make sure you unplug it before you carry yeah, it over. Right. Oh, cool. Amanda's going to be on Ben's show for her birthday. When's your birthday, Amanda? Brian says, whoa, wait a minute, Beard. Let's talk about that amp. I think I'm going to have to hand it to you. Okay, if you sit there. Oh, one bottle down. At least it's water, not coffee. Here it is. She's 183, Clark. It smells like a new amp. You see that? So you got. What do you got? Volume. I can't even see it. Volume, treble, bass, reverb, speed, and intensity. And then, which is interesting. (laughs) You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. On the back, you have a mid knob, which you wouldn't find on a, you know, uh, your on-off switch. And then a fat, non-fat knob, I guess. I found this interesting. There's no, uh, there's a label here for... Yeah, for both the control for the vibrato and the reverb. But not there. And then speaker-wise, I don't know. It has a Tyler speaker in it, which you can't really tell. 
I wonder about the speaker, if that's the right speaker for me. I don't know. Yeah, no pedal. <laughs> uh, Uncle, Uncle Bryce said he just sinned, and Brody reminded him that thou shalt not cover. <laughs> um, it's kind of odd. The speaker, I just looked at it for the first time, it's like an offset in the back of the cabinet. Got JJ tubes in it. Uh, but I don't know what size tubes those are. They're not... Oh, they're 6 feet 6 <laughs> 6 feet 6 Tube rectifier. Tim said that's the biggest terminal pedal he's ever seen. Well. <laughs> there it is. That's the Tyler... And, I, you know, I'm not sure. The 22-watt thing. Yeah. Um... Less, so much less headroom. I, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Sean Zimmer was asking how many preamps. Three, probably. Tubes? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Sean. Uh, there are one, two, three. There are four other tubes. I think. There are four other tubes. That look, they have covers on them, but I'm guessing like, um, what are they? Something. Well, the 12 AX7. 12, yeah. But then maybe something for. They might the be like an AT7 or, or yeah. something. One's probably for reverb. One's probably for tremolo. I would think. So maybe right. two. I don't know. Um, who was it? I think was it Sean? Uh, someone asked if it. Oh, um, Brad Miller. So is that going to be a part of the tremolo series? Which is funny you say that because mm. that tremolo on that thing sounds great, and um, we just mentioned that tonight which kind of got us into the we've never done a full amp demo in anything do we do the full amp demo how do we do it and then mike morrison who was on was one of our field trips yeah has a uh fender deluxe reverb mm. and i think his is a i think it's silver face so it's either late 60s early 70s i think um, and he had said about Asparo and that amp for the Tremolo series. Right. So, I mean, well, and I have, you have the, you have the Skylark, the Gibson Skylark. Right. So we might, there might be, might be, maybe, uh, Mike H asked the wattage. It's 22 Watts, right? 22, 22. Watts. So a Fender Princeton with a little extra stuff. Uh, Brad Miller said he had an old music man amp made by Leo and the Tremolo was killer. Uh, Sean Zimmerman, two six v six, so anywhere from twelve to fifteen, even twenty, maybe depending on how, how it's biased. So yeah, it's, it's billed as a twenty, um, twenty two. I mean, sorry. Yeah, unless he sent me a fifteen. Which is interesting because uh, the one of the Mesa cabinets, uh, cab cal uh, ones I like, was the twenty two, the twenty two caliber. So yeah, I sold those and regret that. I regret. I actually wondered at one point if like maybe he sent me. <laughs> Maybe he sent me a, a 15. Cause I felt like it should be louder. I don't like. Maybe he sent me a PT 15 instead of the 22. Yeah, it happened so fast, and he was generous in his pricing and shipping. But who knows? I don't know. I'll talk to your seat again. Oh, I was off camera. Hi, <laughs> welcome back. Right, look at him. Right. What time is it? Uh, it is 10:30. Oh, jeez. Uh, 22 watts or less. Many people still doing help. <laughs> Tim, Tim, Tim says 22 watts or less is recommended by most chiropractors. <laughs> that one's a little heavy, though. Light comparatively, though. Yeah, Compared, even like the PV Classic 30, right. I think, is light. Cathode biased? I don't know. We're getting into spec sheet stuff that I, I don't know. Look on the site and see if it has the same tube set. Setup probably is. So, yeah, he'll, he'll check it out, but. We weren't really prepared to talk about that, but I kept looking at it and thought, that looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> with a 400-watt speaker. Yes, exactly. 22 watts with a 400-watt speaker. Crystal clear. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we just wanted to. So what else can we make Pat get up and get? Yeah, I know. I already grabbed guitars. You saw his swamp ash and mine. Um, <laughs> Pat Pat will see good deals. Pat's one of those guys like you if if he sees a good deal, he'll buy it whether he needs it or not, just because it's a good deal. It's true because story. like he got a good deal on it. It's a true story. So there's a there's a whole like um over here on this little table that you see on the end. Oh yeah, right. Stack of like pedals that we have to sell. Mm -hmm. Things that we've tried out or used. Yeah. And so tonight I was setting up 
Uh, I don't know. Can you flip? You probably can't flip the screen, can you? No, right there, there. Ta-ra. So this is what's sitting in front of us. So that's what we did. The speaker cranker, and we had the game changer, and then the uh, dispatch master with it. But over here, you can just barely see it peeking out there. There's an AV box, and then behind it <laughs> is the Korg. Here we go. I brought it back. Is the Korg, what is it? Black Magic? The Pitch Black Advance. Tuner. Yeah. And so, like, it's been sitting over there. It's never been open. So I took a liberty to <laughs> box it. it was whatever. Because a... it has, that display on it's beautiful. I don't need these when we use that tuner. <laughs> yeah, so. It's like the top line of the eye chart at the, at the right. optometrist. Uh, but it was a stupid deal of the day, right? So because we have this reverb channel or reverb store, and we're trying to have a variety of things on there. I, sometimes I grab the stupid deal of the day thing and think, eh, if nothing else, we, we could just flip it and make some money. Because they literally are legitimate deals, he says. <coughs> but it, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. It looks good. <laughs> Tim said he's got to go because the sun's coming up there in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to what we were using. I, I don't even know who makes that other one. Oh, it was something that we got for like $8 or whatever. Like... Um, oh, no, it was like a couple bucks. Yeah, that's right. Where, hey, where did it go? That's right there. Well, it's funny because it was There's this. Two of them. It was this company that came out of nowhere, and it had this headstock. It had this. It's a uh, Guitar X, and I don't know if it was an Instagram thing or where I found it, but they had this pedal. They had clip-on tuners. They had capos. All the stuff was like two to five dollars. So it was, think, like, an open, it was yeah. like a launching deal. You could buy it yeah. off for like a couple bucks. And I think I sent it to you. I sent it to a couple other people. So we were using this wonderful thing. And I think there's two of them down here. Uh, probably. And it actually works pretty good. It still has the plastic on it. <laughs> so we can resell it. It still works pretty good. I think they're still available. I think. I mean, I don't think they're three bucks anymore, but right. out of all the stuff they sent us. Yes. The pedal was the best. Yeah, the other stuff was kind of... Yeah. And this is pretty good, but that pitch black one, man. That... Yeah, I have a pitch black on my board at the church. Uh, that's not that one, but it's the pitch black. Oh, you have one of those? I, do. I don't have that one. I have the previous version no. of that one. That one looks like a spaceship. I does. that Because it says it's the... It's the advanced. You know, it's funny. Here's the other thing, right? So, we talked about this before. He just outed me for leveling a deal. But we also love things that are feature laden. And you know how many of probably the alternate tuning things on this thing I'll use? Zero. <laughs> but that's that's almost the actual size of the graphic on the tuner. This pedal can do 470 million different <laughs> right. things, and that's I right. found the one I like. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> it's a true bypass. So does it not have a buffer? We can't use it without a buffer, can we? That's, that's what we use our boss tuners for, for buffers. Well, the other, the other night when we were rehearsing. Yeah. I didn't have a tuner. Was it obvious? I changed the <laughs> preset on my delay pedal for one song. Whoa. It has six times the battery life of the original one. What do you do? You put batteries in pedals? <laughs> Who does that? I was trying to see what, what all what the features it had. Uh, all that I won't use. You know, probably drop D tuning and... Whew. I was just impressed with that, that I changed the... Uh... That is impressive. <laughs> Um, that's way too thick. <laughs> I, I, no, wait, I have it all in there so we can... Right, we could resell it. This will be gently used or maybe celebrity owned. <laughs> oh, wow. Can't read that. Any comments on that? Um, Brian said he got a TC Polytune 3 mini because I needed a good buffer too. <laughs> Brian Landers said boss buffers suck. Clip-on tuners are all the rage now. I do have a, um, I have a cord clip-on that's really nice. So I got, I got the Polytune Mini. Yep. That's what's on the big board. Yeah. Because I like the TU2 tuners better. <laughs> I've just never, of all the boss players. I had to, I had to send a Polytune Mini back. Stop working. Yeah. I had to send it back to Amazon. But I, I, sorry, Brian. I like the boss to you too. Goodness, this is going to be like 
I know I'm showing my age, but you remember the actual maps that we used to use? <laughs> this is kind of getting to that stage that I don't know if I'm going to be able to close it if I can find all of the features. It has to be a lot of features because they called it the advanced or the professional or something. Um, True bypass. What was the other thing? Oh, the clip-on tuner. Mm -hmm. There was a big debate online the other day uh, on the Praise and Worship Board, I believe, about the clip-on. Somebody was like, how can you, you know, be playing guitar and not have a tuner on your pedal board at, at this day and age? And a bunch of guys were like, there's clip-on tuners. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's a love-hate thing. Like, yeah. you, can, you either love them or you hate them. I hate them. We use it that we have one down here that we use a lot. Like if we're over on the other side of the room or something. Right. Uh, I have one upstairs. I love them for like my acoustic guitars and stuff. Right. Uh, I feel like I struggle with them sometimes. But I can't stand playing the guitar with it clipped on there. No, I don't like it at all. Part of it is my vanity. I mean, I waited for 20 years to own a Martin guitar. And the last thing I'm going to do is put something, a capo or a clip-on tuner that's going to cover my Martin logo. Well, I was upset with myself the one time because we were recording over there and we had the clip on and when I was looking at the camera viewfinder, I didn't think it showed the headstock. And then later on, I realized because I didn't take the tuner off. I just don't like the look of the tuner on a, on a guitar. All right. Well, you've said it. So you better go see what people say about that. About this? About that. I'm trying to find it. I can't right, find because there's still, 17 whoa, different languages. Right. This is on, hey, you you are on a... Gear, um, stool, <laughs> or a very bad gimbal. <laughs> the stool costs less than some gimbals. Tuner That's pretty home. crazy. I, I, I don't know. I'm really not seeing anything in here. I have a clip on. Not to recommend for the intonation. Yeah. My vanity doesn't allow clip on tuners. Brian Landry said my vanity doesn't allow. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you quoting bad? <laughs> I don't like them because I see a lot of people's guitars and they're all scuffed up because they use clip ons. Yeah, that's a good point. On acoustics, I use the Korg and the sound hole mounted tuners. They work really well. That's interesting. That's Terry Himes. Hey, Terry. Okay, did you say that, Terry? I don't think I did. Hi, Terry Himes. Sorry. Good to see you. Bad in rant host. Uh, said. Oh, Brian says he said that before you did. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. You're very quotable, Uncle Bry, but I was reading the, the uh, Manuel, so I couldn't tell you. Um, oh, my. I should have shaved if I knew you had a 55 I'm looking at you on a 55 right. inch 4K. I, I would have shaved if I'd have known that I was going to be this close. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we need to see the spinning thing again. Right. I think it's so weird how these things work. Uh, it's showing me all kinds of things about how to tune it, but it's not saying what other features it has. I don't know. This is this is great TV. I'm sure. Pat, Pat, Pat is reading a man here for the first time in his life. He's reading a manual. For those of you who are about my vintage, this is your father at 545 after dinner's over. <laughs> Will you be quiet? I'm trying to read. I don't know. It's got a DC bypass. It doesn't say anything about the features. <laughs> Trim that out of your hair. <laughs> oh, we got a guitar hack. <laughs> oh, hacks in the house. Yeah. Hack's like, how did these guys get a channel? <laughs> I work really hard. They're reading <laughs> manuals in front of us. I don't know. I'm struggling <coughs> with the with the uh, Rand McNally sized uh, thing here to say what all the features on there. Well, yep. But with that riveting. Yes, with that. Here, should we show Hack since you carried it over? Oh my we gosh, should. I gotta lift it up again. Hack, two things. We unbox this for the Tremolo series. Little fender. Here's the other. I, I guess it's. I mean, I haven't put it on Instagram yet. Right. Like it hasn't. It, it's. It's kind of. It showed up. Maybe not love at first sight. Right. No, that's true. You know. I mean, it's like. Right. It's not the '68 or '66 or whatever year Fender Vibrolux that mm -hmm. I've always wanted. Uh, but 
<laughs> carried it over. Here you go, hack. So this is the newest edition, the Tyler Amp. And a couple of people turned us on to this. Um, Drew Swindle, Swindler is one. Yeah. Swindle. Drew Swindle from yeah. Swindler Effects. Mm -hmm. Same amp he uses. Okay. Um, in his shop all the time. In his shop when he right. tests pedals out and stuff like that. Uh, there's a friend of us on, online that, uh, Shad, he uses one of these too. So. Uh, a gold jewel, which you don't see that very often. Shad it gold. Uh, Taylor Amps are made in New Jersey, right? I believe so, yes. At least that's where it was shipped from. Mike H is out. I don't know what we got here. Yeah, I think we're out too. Yeah, right? some other people. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of wanted to catch up, see what was happening. Yeah. We wanted to catch up and. It's not going to load. My phone's supposed to say check in. It won't say anything. It'll say it 75 times now, but. <laughs> nope, it's not Facebook, YouTube. All right. Oh, I think. Kind of back to our Wednesday, Saturday release schedule. Yeah. For... Maybe a couple extras in there. Yeah. But definitely. We had a pile of petals building up during the quarantine. So I think we've recorded five of the 22 Two? yeah. tremolo petals that we have to record. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hack said Sweet Amp. And he just got in from rehearsal. Brian Landreth is saying he's got a role. He's elbow deep in a project. Yeah. We got a role too. Bless. We do. We do. But thanks for stopping in. Yes. Good to see everybody again. We haven't done the live stream. Although it is a little weird. It's a little close. I like yeah. it better when we stream and he's at. <laughs> right. Um, I like it when my crow's feet don't show. Well, when I can sit in my desk chair. and <laughs> Yes. Right. Not on the edge of this painful couch. So, uh, boys and girl. Uh, oh, yeah. Amanda. Amanda. Love to that. To her. Brad Miller's out. I think we're out. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. We're going to figure out Is how... Is there any new names in there today? Um, I felt there was a couple. Yeah. If well, you're Mike, new... Mike H. Uh, if, uh, if Mike's been here before, I apologize. Um, what happened to Tony? Is he still around? I don't know that Tony... I think Tony might have... He, might he had to go put some beard oil in and work on his hair. <laughs> I like, I see the cool thing about him is he's got this and this going, right? Like mm -hmm. he's got the beard and I think he's got a little faux hawk going on. Yeah. He's, he's kind of all of us morphed into one person. I'm just trying to see. No, oh, he said he's here. Okay. So make sure you go to Tony's. I, I don't know why you can't go to people's channels so easy anymore, but go check out Tony's channel and give him a subscribe. Uh, cause he's just starting to build that channel up and check out that freaking pedal board <laughs> extension cabinet combo of his. That's fantastic. His friend built it. It's a custom job. Um, go check out Brian Landris new videos that he has out. Go check out, uh, who, who was it? Um, that had the, uh, video for, oh my gosh. Right. It's too late. I know it is late. Uh, who was the first person? Well, the first person in the chat. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one moment, please. Was it Brad Miller? Yeah, yeah. Check out Brad Miller's take on uh, Henning's six foot apart thing. Thank you. My gosh, it's like three brain farts on one evening. Hack always has great stuff going on. Guitar Hack said, "I uh, hope to see everybody tomorrow night at eight. Go support Hack. He's a great guy." Uh, Bent Tom said he's been hashtag lurking. <laughs> Bent Tom just showing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Hack just released, he did an unboxing last, was it last night, Hack? That did an unboxing of one of uh, TL Pedals, Tim's Pedals. Right. Let's check that out. Well, yeah, I mean, there's so much cool stuff going on. When you go away, when you don't do it every day, you, you right. lose track. You can end the, sh end the stream by showing Hack what you were playing tonight. He would be Hack approved. Oh, uh, well, he... You know he has this. Right, but not with the Thornburgers, but he probably puts... Hack, it was, it was really sweet of you to send this over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, everybody, Hack gave me snots. <laughs> right. <laughs> He'll have it back next time you see him. And I put Thornbuckers in it. Ben Tom has two sets of Thornbuckers. Winning. So. Yeah, this is the one we're going to win. And I think I put the speed knobs on, too. I think I had... I think it's going to speed up. And he puts some schmutz right there. Yeah, I don't know what that's coming from. I don't play it enough to smooth it all up. This guitar, true story, 
is an actual gold top. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual 50s gold top, and we just disguise it. This guitar started life as a left hand. What? The person that owned this originally okay. All right. played it as a left hand guitar, had it set up for a lefty. Okay. So they flopped the, flipped the nut, nut around. But I don't think they ever put a Gibson quality right there. <laughs> my PRSs don't crack. Um, Hex, I don't, Hex said that's not Snots' his brother. <laughs> uh, I don't think he ever put a uh, like a pin because there's no hole up here for okay. like another strap uh, button. Okay. But according to Chris, it, the guy had it played it as a left-handed guitar, which might be why. There's... It might be. Yeah, that's true. Um, Hack wants to know how you, what you think of it with those pickups. Um, sounds good. Yeah. I'm still not 100% certain I have the right volume pots in it. So, Hack, no, I never... It's ridiculous. If it doesn't taper all the way back like a PRS, then... Because I use the volume knob all the time. So, but the pickups sound great. I haven't got the taper right yet, so I don't play it enough yet. I don't take it out very much. We played it tonight, though. Yeah, it sounded good. It sounded really good with the speaker cranker and the game changer through the new Tyler. Mm. Yes, sir. It was good down here in the studio. All right. All right. The Thornbuckers are nice. I like them. Just, I haven't... That guitar and I are taking a long time to get together. <laughs> All right, with that, yes. subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like button. No matter what Same. you hear, you never too much gear. The whole thing. <laughs> okay. All of it. What do you say at 10.30 at night? <laughs> right. All right, have a good night, everybody. Right, we'll see you later. Thanks for jumping in. See you.